You already know how to write some C++ code. You also know that it should be structured into byte-sized chunks that should be put into functions that live in libraries. So imagine this. You're writing your next amazing project, you spend hours on writing out the code and thinking about how great everything is gonna work, and then finally you're there, you're done, you run your code, and... And of course it crashes. Well, at least my code would in such a situation. So, wouldn't it be nice if there would be something that would help us to um, reduce the likelihood of this outcome in an automatic way? Well, of course such a framework exists. There are actually various testing libraries out there that combined become our first line of defense against the bugs. So today we're talking about how to set up such a testing system and how to make it work for our purposes. But before we talk about a concrete framework, Let's talk about what does it even mean to test the code. And, well, essentially it means that we want to check that the code that we wrote does exactly what we wrote it to do. And this testing can happen on many levels. We won't go too deep into this, but largely speaking we usually have these layers. The unit testing layer, test if each module works on its own. The integration testing layer, test how the modules work together. The regression testing layer, that tests that uh, we did not break the critical systems with the new changes and acceptance or system testing layer, basically testing that the whole system works as expected. In general, the first entries on this list are done fully automatic, and uh, we add more and more manual labor as we go down that list. However, today I want to talk about a concrete framework that mostly addresses the first two parts, the unit testing and the integration testing. Largely speaking, there are three different frameworks that I've seen people use in the wild. This is the Google test framework, the catch2 framework, and the doc test framework. And all of them are built on the same principles, but implemented in a different way. So if you learn how to, uh, how to use one, and you can integrate all of those in your CMake or Bazel project, you will be able to learn how to work with the others. In this course, we're going to be using the Google test framework, as this is the one I've seen most often in the industries I've been working in. There are multiple ways to integrate your Google test framework into your project. Google recommends compiling their testing framework along with your project, so we won't install it as dependency system-wide, and we'll instead use the source code directly in our project. For a start, we'll just download it manually, unzip it and put it into the external subfolder of our project folder to be used by our build system. Even though we do start with this manual way, do stick around until the end of this video to find out why it's probably not what we want to do in the end and what we should do instead. Anyway, now that the code is in the project folder, we can use it in our CMake project by adding the necessary add subdirectory command to the cmakelist.txt file. We have to add the minimum required CMake version, we have to set our project, we've done that before, and we want to add the subdirectory external. We then, of course, want to add the cmakeless.txt in the external folder too. For that, we open that file for edit. And when we open it for edit, we add basically just two things. We set the standard of C++ to 17, and then we add the subdirectory Google test. That's it. If we now build our project, it will build the Google test code. But just building the code on its own it's not very useful. We want to use it. For that, we have to add a couple of things to our CMake. We want to call include ctest in the main cmakelist.txt file of the project to enable tests. So we'll just add that. We'll add the include ctest before our add subdirectories. And here I will also add the add subdirectory try google test because that's where our actual code will live. In the folder with your test files, we have to create the test binaries and register them with ctest using the gtest discover tests command. And the first thing we do there is we check if the variable build testing is set to on. Now, this variable is part of the ctest suite, and uh, when we do the include ctest, that variable is automatically set to on. We can override it on the command line, but by default it's on. Now, if it is on, then we can add executable, we call it my test and the code will live in mytest.cpp, and we can use the target link libraries to connect this executable to the gtest library that we already have. Finally, we can include the Google test uh, CMake module 
which comes as part of the Google testing library. And now we have the gtest discover tests uh, micro available to us. So we uh, basically provide this my test executable to it. And from this point on, ctest will know of the existence of our test. But wait, we actually don't have the code there. Let's fix it. We jump back to our editor, create a new file, try Google test, my test .cbp, and type away. The first thing we have to do is we have to include the gtest.h, the header file. And then I will just uh, write a simple function, uh, get meaning of life, that will just always return 42. And that's the function that we are going to be testing uh, here. Now, the actual tests that we want to write will all live in the so called test blocks. To write a test block, we write the test, we provide the test topic, multiple tests can have the same topic, and we provide the name of this test. Uh, it has to be very readable for the users to understand what this test is about. So let's call it trivial equality for now. And uh, we will have to write expect equal here, and uh, we expect the equality of get meaning of life and 42. That's our test. Now, the test and the expect equal are actually macros. Macros is a preprocessor directive in C++. It will be just textually replaced with whatever is provided in the gtest library. For now, it's not really important. We can basically use it as if it were a function. Let's also write another test uh, just to show that there can be multiple of those. Let's type the test, uh, test topic and more equality tests. And let's actually introduce a mistake here. Let's uh, type that the get meaning of life is expected to be zero, which is of course uh, wrong, and then just type that, oh no, this is a mistake. So this, oh no, a mistake uh, will be printed out if this assertion is not true. And we can have multiple assertions per test, and some of them start with assert, some of them start with expect. The difference between those is that assertion will stop the execution when it hits, but the expect will continue the execution of the test. Now, with this test defined and CMake configured to discover them, we can eventually actually run them. Now we just need to build the project again and run ctest. We build uh, the project with cmake minus minus build, build minus j12. And then the new command that we haven't seen before is this. So the command is actually just calling ctest, but we also want to set a variable before doing that. The variable is gtest color that just makes the output of the error so much nicer. And then we provide the test there uh, build. That's where all of our build files live. And uh, we also want to provide the output on failure so that it actually shows the actual output of the test if the test fails. Unfortunately, one of our tests is failing and uh, it shows up in red and even shows the custom message that we wanted it to show in case of failure. So let's go back to the editor and fix it. We can easily fix this error by changing the code in our test. So we just change the 0 to 42 now and then this assertion is going to be true. Uh, we now execute this again and see that all the tests have passed. For now, we've only checked very trivial things in our tests. Uh, I mean, we've been basically testing the function that we wrote inside of the test file. But if we want to use other libraries, uh, which is what we actually want to do, that's not hard to do. We just have to add those libraries as dependencies to our test CMake target and include the header files of those libraries in our C++ test code. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then feel free to go back to a couple of other videos on my channel that I recorded a couple of weeks ago and watch about libraries and CMake um, so that you know a bit more about that. The links are in the description as always. Okay, remember how I told you to stick around until the end of the video? Do stick around until the end of this video to find out why it's probably not what we want to do in the end and what we should do instead. Copying the code from GitHub manually is uh, simply not enough. And let me illustrate. So imagine that you're developing this project with a bunch of colleagues. And if you don't like other people, imagine that you're just doing it on a couple machines, like say one in the office and one at home. Now you've downloaded your Google test code, you put it into your, um, into your project and you've done some changes to your project. Now you upload your changes uh, to Git. You are using Git, right? But you don't upload the changes to Google test. You are not uploading the Google test code to your Git repository because it's not your repository. It's not your code. It's Google code. So it doesn't belong to your repository. It's an external. So you've uploaded your changes to your repository and now your colleagues download the code and try to run it. And what happens? This. CMake fails to find the Google test folder, so now they would also need to manually download it into the external folder. And now you also need to sync on the version of the Google test library that you're using, and you probably can guess that this is not the proper way. And you're totally right. But 
The good part is that there are multiple ways that people do to avoid these issues altogether. And these are the options that I'm aware of that people use. We can install the Google test library as a dependency system-wide. People did that before, but nowadays this is a deprecated way, so don't do that. Uh, we can use the fetch content macro from CMake, which is the Google recommended way. If you go to their website, they recommend to do this. But to be honest, nowadays my preference is to uh, include the Google test code as a sub-module um, into our project. So let's look at how this last option works. We copy the link to the Google test library from GitHub and initialize a sub-module with it. Uh, to do that, we go to our project and there we run git submodule add, the link to Google test's git repository and uh, the, uh, the place where we want it to be cloned, the external Google test. Anybody who clones it can run a command to update it. The command looks like git submodule update minus minus init minus minus recursive. And that gets the latest change from the submodule. Comment below if you want to learn more about submodules in a separate video. One final issue we have to solve here is that people will forget to do this. So people will start complaining and running different versions of the same library and uh, we want to avoid this. So there is this one final trick that we have to do to get rid of all of these problems altogether. If you did watch my CMake lecture, then you remember that I told you that CMake is just a scripting language. And it is. So we can bake the submodule update procedure into CMake directly. For that, create a new folder CMake in your project root and add the file update submodules.cmake in it. Then copy the code linked in the description of this video into it. Here is what this code roughly does. Check if Git exists on your system. It checks if we want to update the submodules, lists the available submodules, and update them. And to call this script, we can add an additional line to our root cmakelist.txt file, and this line is basically this include cmake update submodules.cmake. Now, if we run the cmake commands again, our submodules will be updated automatically. So there is no way for anybody to have an outdated version of the submodules in their project solving all of our problems. That was some amount of content. But uh, I hope that you got from this that you should be testing your code, you should also now know how to test your code, and you should know how to integrate a Google test framework into your CMake project. And if you like the stuff that I do, then subscribe to my channel over there and watch some other video on my channel over here. Thank you and bye.